Welcome to TV20 Classic Sports. I'm your host, Christian Patterson. From all-star matchups to championship games, we've reached into the vault to bring back a part of Cleveland history. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy this episode of TV20 Classic Sports. It all started back in June. Kids came out of schools. The school bell rang for the last time. And yes, the heat was turned up, the pools were filled, and it was learn to swim. It was water festivals. And yes, today it's the climax. The Cleveland Swim Championships right here at Forest Hills Pools. And our special announcer is the aquatics manager, Luther Demery. Luther, tell us first of all a little bit about Forest Hills Pool. Yes, Forest Hills Pool was uh, rededicated in 1988. The city of Cleveland spent over a million dollars in this facility, Tim. As you can see, it is a gorgeous facility. The pool itself is 25 yards wide, 50 yards long. We have an L shape attached to this pool, which has a handicap or disability ramp that, that physically challenged people can't get into this pool area. It's a lovely facility. You know, here at, right here at Forest Hills Pools, we're going to have a lot of events, and as we go through, we'll share them with our viewers. But there has to be some basic rules that the children will have to follow. Can you share those with our viewers? Yes, a couple of rules that, that the kids need to be really concerned with is, is basically the starts. Uh, two false starts, a uh, kid is disqualified for that particular heat. Also, uh, on, the free, on the breaststroke and the butterfly, they must be concerned with touching with two hands at the same time. Those are basically the three rules that really have we have problems with kids swimming in. You know, coming into today's meet, we've heard, heard about two teams in particular. It's Estabrook and Thurgood Marshall, and it could be history made here as Estabrook could try to end its string or keep it going for the city title. And we're going to go to Desiree Powell, who is with the coaches from Estabrook and Thurgood Marshall, about a little bit about their teams. Hi, Tim Luther. I'm at poolside here with the top two coaches for the swim meet today. On my right, I have Matt L. Sesser from Estabrook Recreation Center. And to my left, I have Richard Raines, better known as Nick, from Thurgood Marshall. These two coaches are here. Their teams are looked at as being the two competitive due to some prior meets and some recorded times. So we're looking for some great things from their teams. From your team, for instance, what top event or what top two uh, swimmers do you have on your team that we can look to today? Well, my 8- to 10-year-old girls are looking really strong in all the events. And probably my two top swimmers would be uh, Mike Wyma on the 15, 17 year olds and Bridget Cox in uh, 13, 14 year old girls. Okay, so we should look for some strong times, huh? Okay, and how about for your team? Okay, uh, at the present I have a lot of new swimmers, so I'm not really sure about which one that I can say that's gonna do good. But as far as my veterans, I have uh, Sancire Stallworth and I have uh, Miss Faith Wheeler in the uh, 11 and 12. And Stallworth is in the 13-14, breaststroke. Okay, we'll look forward to watching them. Um, how were your practices this week? What did, did you do anything special for practice to prepare for the meet? Well, we cut down on yards and practice starts and turns, and we did a lot of sprints to just get them ready and prepared for this meet, basically what we did. It went real well. Well, good. And how about you? How was practice? We basically did about the same. Uh, we practiced for a couple of hours, and then we, we rested a a couple hours. <laughs> okay. Now going into the meet, what final words did you give your team or have you given your team yet of what they should think of and what should they should be thinking about ready to compete? Well, I basically said don't worry about the other swimmers near you. Just go for your best time, do your best, and I'll be happy. So. Okay. And how about you? What's your final words to your team? <laughs> the best swimmer wins. <laughs> and good luck to both teams. Okay. I want to I want to congratulate both of you. We look for a great meet and uh, good luck to both of you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, okay we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we'll have the start of today's championship meet. Okay. My house needs fixing, but my piggy bank is empty. What should I do? Do what grown-ups do when they need to repair their homes. Call Cleveland Action to support housing and borrow up to $25,000 at 4.5% interest for a single-family home. Choose from a list of approved contractors. There are no waiting lists and no income restrictions. Call cash at 621-7350.
want to know how to turn your kid off to school? Want to really make us not care about learning anything? Tell me you got to school with no help from your parents and I'll have to do the same. When the teacher invites you up for a talk, don't show. Keep on saying girls are no good at math. That'll turn me off. Face it, when parents don't care, kids don't care. Then they don't learn. Show me a parent who really cares, and I'll show you a kid who can learn. Welcome back to Forest Hills Pole. It's the Cleveland Swim Championships, and we're going to do the honor of the national anthem by Mr. Joe Dubay. He's 12 years old, a sixth grade student at St. Cyril Methodius. The national anthem. <laughs> Joe Dubay, 12-year-old, a sixth grader from St. Cyril Methodius, also an honor roll student. He's been part of the cultural arts programs under the direction of Joe DeJarnay, who's one of the instructors in the Cleveland Recreation. Luther, we're getting ready to start the meet, and our first event is the individual medley. Could you tell our viewers a little bit about what the individual medley is all about? Yeah, Tim, basically this is the marathon of swimming. If you have four laps to swim, 100 yards, they will use four different strokes from a quarter of each. The first stroke leading off will be the butterfly, the breast stroke, the back stroke, and the freestyle. Again, this is probably the most grueling event in swimming. Uh, individual swimming in this particular event has to be a good swimmer in all four strokes. So our first event is going to be the toughest one. It will be the boys in the 15-17 individual medley. And we're going to go ahead and introduce the swimmers. In lane number one, you're looking at Craig Conway from Estabrook Recreation. In lane two, from Michael Zone, it's Damian Bernardo. In lane three, Mike Wyma from Estabrook. In lane four, from Lincoln Pool, John Carney. Tim, I see we have quite a few swimmers who didn't show today. So again, I guess we're finding out that because it is the vacation months that we do have some no-shows, but Conway, Bernardo, and Wyma are here for the individual medley in our first event of the Cleveland Swim Championships. Off to a good start here, Tim, for the three swimmers. And this is, this is going to be a highly contested race. Weimer in lane three has a good butterfly stroke. It would be good to see if he can maintain this pace. Excellent touch. Oh, he's running away with it. He's very smooth in the fly and the backstroke. So right now we're looking at the backstroke. Coming down, it was the butterfly. Third leg of this event is the breaststroke, and he's, he's an excellent breaststroker also. Again, you're looking at the Cleveland Swim Championships, our first event, the individual medley. Boys 15 to 17, out in front in lane number three. As we can see, he has no wasted motion, Tim. He has no wasted motion whatsoever. He's very fluent. 
He comes off the wall excellent, and he has an excellent crawl. It should be an excellent time for him in a hundred. Again, they're finishing up with freestyle. And Luther looks like Mike Wyma comes in at 114.85. And again, Mike Wyman is a ninth grader from St. Ignatius. He is our city champion. And not only has Mike been uh, on the aquatic scene, he's also a merit roll student, perfect attendance, been involved with basketball, football. But his name has been one of the outstanding swimmers of this meet in 1989, as well as in 1992. Maybe you can tell us a little bit more about Estabrook and Mike Wyman, Luther. Well, speaking of the Wymas, it goes back to Frank. The older brother, who's basically a lifeguard, a captain in the city pools, and he just hands down his tradition to his younger brothers. And I think we have probably have about three brothers who are swimming in this meet. It's just a contribute to Esther Brooks Aquatics program that they produce quality swimmers, and and Mike is an example of that. And you will see him again later on in this meet. Well, again, we're going to be hearing about the Estabrook team as Desiree met with the coach beforehand. They're going to be going after a record fifth consecutive city championships on the aquatic arena with the city of Cleveland. Our next event is in the individual medley for the girls, 15 to 17, as they're coming up to their lanes. In lane number one is Melissa Lane from Stella Walsh Recreation Center. In lane number three is Nicole Schiffbauer from Neff Pool. In lane number four from Stella Walsh, Mary Crofta. And in lane number five from Cadell Recreation, it's Kim Lord. This is our second event of today's Cleveland Swim Championships. You know, the young lady, Nicole Shipwell from Neff Pool, I didn't see her swim in the districts. I was uh, quite busy at another pool. So it's gonna be very interesting to see her swim this, this particular leg. Again, we're swimming four lines of the pool using four different strokes here. Again, Luther, the first lane, they're coming down in the butterfly. They're coming down in the fly. They will go back in the backstroke, then the breaststroke, and then the freestyle, or the American crawl, as is known. Nicole is, uh, Nicole is a very strong swimmer. We just finished half of the, half of the event. We're coming down in the breaststroke event. And this is, the, this is the leg that basically those second and third place swimmers try to make their move in. Nicole has basically a good two body lengths on the second place swimmer. And she's very fluid in the water, she's smooth, she looks very comfortable. The one thing she has to work on is her turns off the wall. She loses valuable seconds by not taking a complete glide off that wall, Tim. But that's something that comes with practice over years. Again, we got to remember these kids are recreational swimmers. A lot of these kids that we'll see today come out of our Learn to Swim program. They may be doing competitive swimming for two years, not at max. Well, we've got the signal from our final judge, Antonio Elmore. It was lane three, Nicole Schiffbauer from Neff Pool. Nicole is an eighth grade student at St. John's Lutheran. She also uh, plays a little bit of volleyball, 13 years old. And she has been crowned our city champion of the individual medley, girls 15 to 17. Luther, our next event is probably the most popular event amongst all our swimmers. You call it the American Crawl. I hear the kids talk about freestyle. Can you tell us a little bit about this event? And this basically is where a lot of the kids start. Right, this is, this is, the, this is the particular stroke that most of the kids love to swim. This is more, a lot of times, is the first stroke they will learn in a, in a Learn to Swim program. Basically, we're looking here for a good start. 
we only swim in one lap, so these 8 to 10 years don't have to worry about the turn. But if we get off to a good start, a good dive, stay focused, they should do really well in this event. Now, in our, our first event, the uh, 8 to 10, Will they go both lengths of the pool, or is that a special rule for that age group? No, this is a special rule for the 8 to 10 age group. We're swimming 25 yards here, you know, and basically, uh, again, a lot of these kids will come out of our Learn to Swim program. We don't want to push them too fast at that young age. They will have the opportunity to move up into the, to the longer distance as they begin, get a little older. Okay, so our next event is going to be the freestyle event. And again, our swimmers will be starting on the opposite end of the pool, down closest to our end. And uh, we're going to have them lining up in their lanes. In lane number one, again, we've talked about the outstanding teams. It's going to be Thurgood Marshall, Devon Cleveland. In lane number two will be William Mathis from Thurgood Marshall. In lane three from Estabrook, Richard Wyma. In lane four, from Low Pool, Kyle Beck. In lane number five, from John F. Kennedy, Tyrone Williams. And in lane six, from Fairfax Recreation Center, it's Kevin Williams. These are our top six finalists in the city of Cleveland going for the title today in the boys' freestyle. Tim, this race, uh, you have uh, Rich Weimer and Matthews out of Thurgood Marshall, who basically probably been swimming against each other for the last two seasons in this age group. A lot of times these coaches like to start these kids early in this age group, so they might end up competing for a couple seasons. We're off to a good start. It's going to be a highly contested race going down to the finish over there. But if our times hold true, we should have another Wyoming receiving the gold medal. Okay, it's lane number three. three. Richard Wyma, Luther again. We talked about that Wyma family, and here we are. And you look at his time, Tim. His, his, his qualifying time was 1640. You know, his time was re relatively close to the qualifying time, but I believe he beat his qualifying time. Right, it was 1582. Right. Again, the second place finisher right behind. We talked about Mathis. He was right near his time as well. Again, Richard Wyma, a fourth grade student from Blessed Sacrament. Walks away with the city title in the boys freestyle, 10 and under. And just for our viewers, you're going to get to get a close-up view of all our city champions as we'll be presenting medals after all the events today. In our next event, it is the girls' opportunity, 10 and under, freestyle. In lane number one from Thurgood Marshall, Kiana Cleveland. In lane two from Estabrook, it's Crystal Harrison. And in lane three, from Estabrook, Elizabeth Elsesser. In lane four, from Estabrook, Shannon Cox. In lane five, from Estabrook, Katie Farron. And in lane six, from Meyer Pool, it's Crystal Diaga. Tim, we know we're talking about the Wymers. Here's the Elsessers. Again, Margaret and Matt Elsesser are not swimming, they're lifeguards. The younger sister has taken out where they're left off at, and she's favored to win this particular event. We're off to a good start. I believe this race is going to be a lot closer than the first one. All six of these swimmers are within a half a body length of one another. And we have El Cesar at the wall. Again, it's really a tribute to the Estabrook uh, program. You can see that they had four swimmers. As Luther mentioned, uh, Elizabeth Elsesser came in as the champion of the girls 10 and under. She's a fifth grade student, honor roll, perfect attendance. Coach told us, describing Elizabeth, that she has a lots of determination and she faithfully comes to all the practices, works hard, and has the goal of becoming a city champion, not just in, in aquatics, but also in a lot of things that she does. You know, you take a look at that Esther Brooks team and that Thurgood Marshall team, it comes from parents' dedication of getting those kids to the pool, making sure they go work out, and good coaching. And, and once you got the combination of those three teams, nine times out of 10, you will come out with a winner somewhere. You know, Luther, maybe for our viewers, we say, well, this person is really the favorite here. How do we know, and how did the, we get to this, the six finalists? Well, basically, we, we run three dual meets, then we run a district final, and we take the best six times citywide and compute those times, and these are where the kids come from. 
Okay, our next event, boys freestyle, ages 11 and 12. In lane number one, from Estabrook, it's Joe Wyma. In lane two, from Warsaw, Mike Rinaldi. In lane three, from John F. Kennedy, Brock Stuball. In lane four, from Forest Hills, Antonio Williams. In lane five, from Estabrook, Mitch Bear. In lane six, from Karush Pool, it's Donald Black. This is 50 yards, that's up and back. These young swimmers have excellent times for 50 yards. We have a good start here. We have the middle of this pool, lanes three and four. I believe lane four is off the wall first, Tim, going down. Sometimes these kids do not swim true to form. They get into more competition, better swimmers, they swim better. And the winner's out of lane four. There he is, Antonio Williams from right here at Forest Hills Pool. Grabs the city crown in the boys freestyle. He's a seventh grader at Kirk Junior High. Also an honor roll student in perfect attendance. And coach had told us he's the most improved swimmer right here at Forest Hills for him during the summer. Again, our congratulations goes out to Antonio. And again, you can call it the uh, home pool advantage. Is that it, Luther? You can call it competition. Oh, okay. <laughs> competition makes you swim better, Tim. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I think you're right, Luther. A lot of times the kids get into their district meets and feel that, hey, I've won, I'm out in front. But again, it's the top six times. You may have two or three come from one district even though they didn't win. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, our next event is the girls, 11 and 12, freestyle. In lane number one from Estabrook, it's Julie Beeble. In lane two from Glenville, Tasha Mason. In lane three from Estabrook, Rachel Boyd. In lane four from Impet, Mary Beth Gannon. In lane five from John F. Kennedy, Tia Powell. In lane six from Estabrook, Rachel Shea. Those are the top six finalists in today's girls freestyle 11 and 12. You know, and Tim, most of these young ladies have swum against one another before in this age bracket, so it should be very interesting. Good start. You know, swimming 50, 50 yards, 50 meters, you can go all out. You can start and you can end at the same pace. And that's the good thing about 50 yard swim. When you start moving up to 100 yards and, and above, you have to pace yourself. Here you can just go all out from the word go. I believe we're going to have Rachel Boyd into the wall. Lane three. Lane three, Rachel Boyd from Estabrook Recreation. Estabrook is piling up team points here early in the freestyle events. Again, Rachel, an eighth grade student from Our Lady of Good Counsel, merit roll, softball. You know, Coach says, hey, she's always smiling. You can see there the happiness coming away as the city champion here today. You know, Estabrook's swim team, not to belabor the point, but they don't even coach their summer team. They turn their coaching over to their summer lifeguards during the summer. And you, when you have a Matt Elsesser who basically won everything in the city last fall, as your coach, you have a role model, you have a good coach, you have something the kids look up to, and it can't do anything but enhance the program there. Okay, our next event is the boys freestyle, ages 13 and 14. In lane number one, from Estabrook, it's Mike Bear. In lane two, from E.J. Kovacic, Jim Bokowski. In lane three, from Karush, Roger St. Clair. In lane four from Stella Walsh, Jason Johnson. In lane five from Neff, it's Billy Webb. And in lane six from Estabrook, Chris Manfredi. We have a good start. Seemed like lane two was rolling a little bit, but it wasn't called a false start. And to the wall, Tim, we have about four swimmers who are in striking distance. Excellent flip turn. First time we've seen a swimmer flip today. It takes a little practice to do that. 
You don't learn that turn overnight. Well, Luther, it looks like it's coming right down to the wire. It's gonna be close. Oh my goodness, we might have a photo finish there. Okay, we got lane four. It's Jason Johnson from Stella Walsh, 14 years old. He's a ninth grader at John Hay High School. He's the first one here to be crowned from Stella Walsh as a city champion here today. You know, I, Stella Walsh does something kind of halfway strange during the summer. They take their swim team from Stella Walsh and split their swims between Stella Walsh and Warsaw Pool, the other pool that's basically located in their neighborhood. And I told us, the center manager, Marty Pizak, if you ever keep your team together as one team like you do in the fall, then you'll have a chance to win the city title. I guess they felt better by letting those kids swim out of the pool they originally swam for. But they have an excellent swim program in that area over there, Tim. Now, Stella Walsh, where is that located at, Luther? Stella Walsh is located on Broadway Avenue. I believe it's around by 61st or 64th and Broadway. Uh, excellent recreational program, a, a gorgeous facility. Excellent staff, Marty Pizak and his people over there do a good job, not only with swimming, but any other program they attempt to run. Okay, our next event is the girls freestyle, ages 13 and 14. In lane one from Warsaw Pool, Mary Loring. In lane two from Low Pool, Carrie Baskowitz. In lane three from Estabrook, it's Bridget Cox. In lane four from Michael Zone, Sarah Kurtz. In lane five, from Stella Walsh, Jen Mullica. And in lane six, from Thurgood Marshall, Star Stallworth. This is gonna be a very, very competitive heat here. All of these young ladies are excellent swimmers. I mean, excellent swimmers. We got a slow start on lane six. They're strong, all of them are strong coming down the pool, Tim. Bridget Cox and Sarah Kurtz have been swimming against one another, I guess, for the last three years. And you get to call their names so much, sometimes you want to put them on the same team. See your nice form. Again, it's in lane number three, our champion, Bridget Cox from Estabrook, eighth grade student. Also is involved as an honor roll student at her school. Runs a little bit of track for the school as well. If she runs as well as she swims, she's a good track star in because she's an outstanding swimmer. You know, Luther, when you think of the Matt Biondas that's been in the Olympics and our American freestyle champion, these really are kids that are starting at, that really don't take a second place to none. There are future possibly Olympians that could end up like a Matt Beyond. Without a doubt, Tim. I mean, all it takes is all it takes is dedication, some work, and have someone who really appreciates what you're doing. And, and these swim team coaches out of the city really appreciate these kids. The parents are 100% behind them. When you get again, when you get those combinations, they, they're hard to beat. Yeah, you know, we see a lot of parental support here today, and, and really that's what it's all about in the city of Cleveland. Need to know mom and dad are behind them, giving them that support. Again, our next event, again, the final age group, boys freestyle 15 to 17. In lane number one from Lincoln Pool is Edwin Flores. In lane number two from Lincoln Pool, Sean Campbell. In lane number three from Estabrook, Mike Wama. In lane number four from Lincoln Pool, John Carney. In lane number five from Michael Zone, Damian Bernardo. In lane number six, from Glenview, Lenny Martin. Those are our top six finalists, today's 1517 Boys Freestyle. Hmm. Now this here is four laps. They have to swim 100 yards. And again, the key here is to have enough to finish. Around that second lap, going into that third lap, Swimmers tend to slow down from exhaustion. You got to save enough in reserve to finish. And that's gonna be the telling point here. So our biggest biggest factor in here is gonna be endurance. Endurance. Endurance and learning to relax. Stroke smoothly, no waste of motion, good breathing. 
excellent flip turn off the wall. Kid comes off the wall great. And again, Tim, this is something that you can't, you can't coach. A kid really has to have the desire to learn these things. Excellent time. Great time. Again, our city champion from Estabrook Recreation, time of 103.59, is Mike Wyma. He's a ninth grade student from St. Ignatius. We talked about him being the outstanding swimmer in 1989, as well as 1992, and maybe 1994 could be another <laughs> year for Mike. No telling. <laughs> it's a little early yet, but he's a new running already. <laughs> You know, Luther, competitive swim teams is part of aquatic programs. Could you tell us a little bit about the uh, exercise and canoeing programs that are going on in the city of Cleveland? Right. Uh, about four or five years ago, Tim, water exercises program across the country took off. I mean, I mean, it went skyrocketed. It went right through the ceiling. And what they found was that you can do a lot of exercise in the waters that you cannot do on the land or on the deck. It breaks down the buoyancy. It helps with the shins. So you don't have our senior citizens and our older population worrying about their legs so much when they're doing it in the water. We offer this program at all 17 of our recreation centers to both seniors and adults. You know, we get kids involved in this here. And uh, again, it's the same exercises that you would do normally you do in the water. Okay, well, we're going to go back and finish up the freestyle event, girls, 15 to 17. In lane number one, it's Julie Weima. In lane number two, from Stella Walsh, Mary Crofta. In lane number three, from Neff Pool, Nicole Schiffbauer. In lane number four, from Warsaw Pool, Megan Daniels. In lane number five, from Thurgood Marshall, Deanna Reed. And in lane number six, from Low Pool, it's Christine Langford. Top six finalists, girls freestyle, 15 to 17. These young ladies are our are, are future lifeguards standing up in these lanes. So let's take a look and see exactly what these strokes look like. And as you can see, all of these young ladies can swim. They have excellent, excellent body position in the water, good rotation of the arms, and good breathing techniques. We have quite a few flip turns, and we use some grappling turns. The difference between a grappling turn and flip turn is that a person does a, does a speed turn is going to come off the wall with both feet. He's going to swim into the wall. The flip turn, the person is going to flip and do the same thing. So it's very important that you learn how to uh, move off the wall. Good example of the flip turn you're talking about, Luther. Nicole Schiffbauer is an excellent swimmer, and she has good, good stamina, Tim. Excellent stamina. As you can look, as you can see her time, just in the clock now is for three laps. And this is coming down into the home stretch here. And basically she has a fourth of the pool lead on the rest of the field. But we have a surprise here in, in, in lane number uh, lane number one who's who's swimming in the second place out of Esterbrook. And basically Okay, Luther, it was lane number three, Nicole Schiffbauer from Neff Pool, capturing the girls freestyle 15 to 17 age group, as well as Julie Wyma coming in second, which is one of the upsets that we had in today's meet as far as timing. And when we come back, we're gonna have the medal presentation of the individual medley, as well as all the freestyle champions from today's meet. In a recent worldwide educational test, the United States didn't rank first Korea, or second Taiwan, or even third. Switzerland. It seems while the rest of the world raised their educational standards, Scotland, Slovenia, we didn't. Spain. So we came in 14th. The United States. And 14th is no place for our kids to be. Call 1-800-96-PROMISE and we'll give you lots of ways to help our kids move forward again. This little piggy went to market. This little piggy stayed home. This little piggy had roast beef. This little piggy had none. And this little piggy went wee -wee 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 all the way home.
the fact of the matter is, the most dangerous thing most people will ever face in the water is the water. Welcome back to Forest Hills Pool for the Cleveland Swim Championships. We're going to have the medal presentation of the champion so far today in the Cleveland Swim Championships. First, we're looking at the 15 to 17 medley winners as well as the freestyle champions. Again, presenting the awards is the aquatics manager, Mike Assistant Manager Mike Dutko. These are the freestyle champions. Again, Richard Wyma. Those are swim champions in the freestyle and the individual medley events. Our congratulations goes out to all of them. Luther, our next event for today's meet is the breaststroke. And maybe you can tell our viewers a little bit what the difference between the freestyle and the breaststroke is gonna be. Well, the biggest difference, Tim, is that you have an arm recovery that's underwater. And the second thing is that, that the kick is different. You have a whip kick, instead of a flutter kick. And you would notice the difference in the arm recovery and the kick. The biggest thing for these swimmers to remember is that this is a two-hand touch. If you do not touch with two hands, you will be disqualified. So when they touch, Luther, it must be both hands at the same time on the touch pads. At the same time. Otherwise, they'll be disqualified. Yes, they will be. OK, in our first event, it is the breaststroke. Boys, 8 to 10. In lane number one from Thurgood Marshall, it'll be William Mathis. In lane two from Estabrook, Richard Wyma. Lane three from Thurgood Marshall, Devin Cleveland. Lane four from Stella Walsh, Sway Stopkupper. In lane five from Estabrook, Mike Warma. And in lane six, it's Thomas Moskowski from Warsaw Pool. You know, Tim, over the years, Est Thurgood Marshall basically have excelled in this particular stroke. They do excellent in the breaststroke events, not so well in the backstroke, but basically in the breaststroke events over the years, they have excelled. And we have a close contested race here. And again, we may not be swimming true to times. I believe we have a swimmer in lane two who seems to be in the lead at this point. Lane two. In lane two, it's Richard Wyma from Estabrook. He didn't come in today with the best time, but he did it here today with the best time in his Crown City champion. Boys breaststroke age is 10 and under. He's from Estabrook Pool, fourth grader out of Blessed Sacrament. And I, I know the parents of the Wymas are going to be taking a lot of medals home so far, Luther. Mrs. Wyma will be there to collect them, I can tell you that. <laughs> Our next event is the girls, 10 and under, breaststroke. In lane one from Thurgood Marshall, Marquita Durant. In lane two from Estabrook, Megan Manfredi. In lane three from Estabrook, Elizabeth Elsesser. Oh my goodness. In lane four from Estabrook, Shannon Cox. In lane five from Estabrook, Katie Farron. And rounding it out in lane number six from Thurgood Marshall, Mayana Cleveland. You know, you look at Elizabeth and you, you ask yourself, is Matt coaching her? Yes, he is. He's her coach this summer. <laughs> and probably was a coach this winter also. Good start. Oh, she's fast. Yes, she is. <laughs> she rises. See how she rises out the water? Yes. You know, she's pumping. She's pumping it. And she's smooth. Yes, she is. Very smooth. Well, we can see it was lane three, Elizabeth Elsesser. 
Now, I heard Desiree talking about speed and quickness. Des, are you trying to tell me that the Elsesser family is noted for outstanding <laughs> swimmers? Well, it's appearing that way today. <laughs> but uh, she was fast. She was, she was very smooth. Well, later on, Desiree's going to have a chance to uh, talk to Miss Elsesser. But we talk about water safety. One of the things that Desiree had a chance to do was catch up with one of our outstanding units called Ports and Harbor, and they actually talked about some water safety issues. Hi, we're here at the Ports and Harbor Patrol with Lieutenant McNeely from the Port Harbor and Safety. What is the Port and Harbor and Safety? Well, the uh, Ports and Harbors unit was formed in 1963 by Lieutenant Jack Delaney and it was formed as a search and rescue rescue unit of the Cleveland Police Department since Cleveland is located on one of the Great Lakes. Uh, it also evolved into a dive team as a uh, recovery unit for evidence, bodies, uh, things like that. And now the last few years we've really uh, increased our enforcement. Okay, so you have training as police officers but extra special training within water safety and issues of the water. Exactly. The uh, the recommendation is that you at least have five years as a patrol officer before you can tr apply for the unit. We like to have people that are scuba uh, educated already, although in some incidents we will train you. We like to have people that know a little bit about boating, boating safety. Okay. Well, is this a year-round or seasonal position, or are, are you covering the waterfront 24 hours or set hours? During the uh, summer months, we work a two-shift operation, uh, basically to 2 o'clock in the morning. From 2 o'clock to 8 o'clock, we're on a call-in basis. We go uh, roughly, it's, it's all year round, but in the wintertime, we have a reduced number of personnel assigned here. Okay. Well, to stay physically fit during those summer, or I should say winter months, how do, what do the patrol officers do to stay physically fit, ready to go on call at any time? Well, due to the fact that we would be called at any time to, to do any diving, including the winter months, we use one of the city recreation, we use Sterling Recreation Center, and uh, we try to get up there at least three or four days a week, and uh, the guys will use their fins, some will, some will just do free swimming, but we try to work out at least 45 minutes a day at, at the rec center swimming. Okay, so I take it that the times are convenient for everyone to, to go out and get their exercise in. Right. We, we usually split it up so there's a couple guys here in case something would happen. They have the phone number up there. We can contact one another. Okay. Well, what would be, well, well I should say, since you're always out on the water um, trying to help people at, at all times, how do you get in the educational role of, of educating people about water safety? Well. <clears throat> A lot of it is education on the water itself. I mean, if, if we see somebody that might be a, a minor violation of, of the laws, we would advise that person, hey, this is what you're doing wrong. This is what it should be, how it should be done. We also, in the wintertime, uh, two of our uh, members are assigned to the third grade seatbelt safety program that's run through the state. And part and parcel of that is at the end of the program, they show the third graders a little bit of water safety. Uh, the number one thing is wearing a personal flotation device, a, a life jacket, how to properly put it on, what to do when you're near the water, you know, and, and, and things like that. So it's a good idea to educate young. It's a good idea to start them real young. That's when you, <laughs> you, you have to tell these kids early that the water is a fun place, but it can be a very dangerous place if you don't use a little common sense and a little safety. Okay. Well, we would like to thank you very much, sir, Lieutenant McNeely, for taking the time to educate us all on a bit, little bit more about Ports Harbor and Patrol and water safety. Now back to the swim meet. Welcome back to Forest Hills Pool. Thank you, Desiree. Again, Ports and Harbor does an outstanding job. Our next event is the boys' breaststroke, ages 11 and 12. In lane number one, from John F. Kennedy, David Jackson. In lane two, from Thurgood, Paul Hart. In lane three, from John F. Kennedy, Maxwell Agnew. In lane four, from Thurgood Marshall, Romero Cleveland. In lane number five, from Thurgood Marshall, Larry Mathis. In lane six, from Carouche, Donald Black. Top six finalists, boys breaststroke 11 and 12. You know, this team out here at John F. Kennedy Recreation Center with Mike Bannister and Robbie Morton and Bodie Johnson. They worked hard to put a team together, Tim, and, and, and these swimmers are improving every year. And one year they were the cream of the crop. We have a good stroke here. It's gonna be very interesting to see what, these, what times these kids come up with on the second leg. 
good touch. They still can practice coming off this wall. They, kill, they cut themselves short with poor push-offs the wall, poor body alignment for the turn. I believe it's going to be Maxwell Agnew to the wall in lane three. Lane three. There it is. It's lane number three. Maxwell Agnew brings back the first champion for John F. Kennedy today. It's Maxwell Agnew. He is a eighth grade student at the School of Arts, 12 years old, merit roll student. And yes, he swam here in 1993 at the city finals. But today was the lucky one where he walks away with the city title. Boys breaststroke champion, 11 and 12, Maxwell Agnew from John F. Kennedy. And again, you know, out there at JFK, uh, they've been doing some work with the community, trying to get some community support for their swim team out there. My hat goes off to Robbie Morton and Bodie Johnson, along with the other fine staff out there at JFK. They've come a long ways in two years, Tim. Okay, our next event is the girls breaststroke. 11 and 12. In lane number one is Rochelle Shee from Estabrook. In lane number two from Impet is Mary Beth Gannon. In lane number three from Thurgood Marshall, Faith Wheeler. In lane number four from Thurgood Marshall, Lakeisha Sturtmeyer. In lane number five from Estabrook, Rachel Boyd. And in lane number six from John F. Kennedy, Tia Powell. You know, this Faith Wheeler and Strittmeyer are veteran swimmers for Richard Reigns out there at Thurgood Marshall. It's going to be very interesting to see can they hold one and two in this event. And both swimmers are in the middle of the pool, lanes three and four. We have a swimmer that's swimming out of lane number five that's currently in the lead. Michelle Boyd out of Esterbrook. This is going to be right down to the wire. It looks like lane three and lane five are in dead heat. I believe lane five will win it at the wall. It was lane number five from Estabrook, Rachel Boyd. Again, Tim, a lot of times these swimmers will compete in their districts and be the best. Again, Rachel, an eighth grade student at Our Lady of Good Counsel, Merritt Rose softball. You can tell she's very happy being crowned city champion. And it looks like we've talked about times. Here she comes in at 42, 40. Her time in the district was 45, 16. You can see she's done some a lot of work from the district to the final meet to improve her time, and it's paid off for her today. Well, good competition to make you improve, Tim. It'll push you, and that's what happened today. She was swimming against better swimmers, and they pushed her. Her time shows the improvement. Well, our next event is the boys' breaststroke 13 and 14. In lane number one from Kavasik, Jim Bukowski. In lane three from lane two from Stella Walsh, Jason Johnson. In lane three from John F. Kennedy, Joval Dizard. In lane four from Estabrook, Chris Manfredi. In lane five from Estabrook, Steve Noga. And in lane six from Carouche, Roger St. Clair. Those are our top six finalists in the boys breaststroke 13 and 14. The race is in the middle of the pool here. The kid from Estabrook. He's smooth, but he doesn't put his face in the water. It slows him down. When you don't put, when you don't try to drop your face in the water, the water tendency has a tendency to hit you in the chest. And it can't do nothing but slow your movement down. If he, if he drops his head, he'd be much level and he'd glide much further. Although even swimming like that, he will win this event. He's strong. Lane number five. It's Steve Noga from Estabrook. 
And again, Estabrook is coming in here as the four-time city champion in the aquatics program, and it looks like they've got a good lead. He's a ninth grade student from Padua, on a roll, perfect attendance. And again, the coaches credits, credits him for, with a good work ethic. When he's at practice, does what the coaches say, practices hard on his own. And if you, you can see Steve, Steve swam with 41-36 to qualify. Here he swam with 38. So he's, uh, he's improved quite a bit in a, in a week's time. Our next event is the girls' breaststroke, 13 and 14. In lane number one from Michael Zone. And again, I want to make sure I got there. Okay, Sarah Kurtz from Michael Zone in lane one. In lane two from Thurgood Marshall, Tierra Sanders. In lane three from Estabrook, Bridget Cox. In lane four from Thurgood Marshall, Star Stallworth. In lane five from Stella Walsh, Jen Melica. And in lane six from Thurgood Marshall, Crystal Watson. This is the matchup of the day, Thurgood and Estabrook. And we all knew that it was gonna come down to these two teams. No, we talk about age brackets. It's about age brackets, you know, and if the kid falls within an age bracket, no matter what the size is, he can swim. Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's, it's according to techniques. Uh, these kids see these Olympic swimmers swim, and they try to, to copy, copy the technique. No, that was, that was an incorrect time, Des. That was the time for the lane for fourth place there. Bridget Cox is an excellent swimmer, and as you can see uh, throughout this roster, you will see her name appear several times, and every time you've basically seen her name. Okay. okay, so we saw that Bridget Cox walked away with the city title in the 13-14 girls. Again, she's an eighth grade student at North Royalton Middle School, an honor roll student, runs track. And again, are lining up are the 15-17 boys breaststroke. In lane number one, we're looking at Craig Conway from Estabrook. In lane two, from Michael Zone, Damian Bernardo. In lane three, there he is again, Mike Wyma from Estabrook. In lane number four, from Carouche Pool, it's Brian Williams. In lane number five is Josh Grove from Grovewood Pool. In lane number six, from Lincoln Pool, Sean Campbell. The thing to remember here, Tim, this is 100 yards, four laps. Speed and endurance will play a big part in the completion of this race. The swimmers are smooth, though. You have, you have the two swimmers in the middle of the pool who have excellent pools. You can see how well they pull. See where the water's hitting the kid in the chest? He's rising totally out the water, the front mm -hmm. torso. And that comes from a good pull, good strong shoulder pull, arm pull, and legs. If you guys noticed that Mike Wyman was pushed off the wall, took him about a third of the way of the pool. Now that's the way you're supposed to push off the wall. You get as much out of much distance out of it as you possibly can. We're looking at we're looking right now at Brian Williams from Carouche Pool. He's out in front. And again, out, we've just reached a little bit beyond the halfway point. Now, this is where the endurance comes in at. You know, you can't use all of it and not have anything for the finish. And it's going to come down to the finish. Watch the push. Okay. Watch the push. Look at the push. A third of the pool. That's the difference between him and the first place swimmer. It'll be a close finish, Luther. Right. If, he, if the first place swimmer had a good push off the wall, the contest would be over. He doesn't push off the wall as well as Weimer does. He pulled it through. 
There we are, it's in lane four, Brian Williams, a time of 128.68, which is again, a lot quicker than what he did the district. He improved his time by almost four full seconds. Um, he walks away with our city title in the boys breaststroke 15 to 17. He's a 10th grade student at John F. Kennedy High School. Again, Luther, maybe you can tell us, where is Caroose Pool located at? Caroose Pool is located on 175th and Tarkington Avenue. That's on the south side, east side of the city of Cleveland. The great thing about this here, this pool is in, is in basically walking distance to John F. Kennedy Recreation Center. So those swimmers out of Caroose should be swimming this fall up at JFK, as well as the swimmers out on the west side of Cleveland that's close to Zone Recreation Center or the Clock Recreation Center. They should be grabbing these swimmers. So they're ready for the fall of the year. So any of our viewers that might have children that are interested in, in competing and learning how to swim and getting involved in swim meets, there will be a winter swim meet. So what they need to do is maybe go to their nearest recreation center this fall and get with the lifeguards where they'll teach their kids and maybe they can be here this winter at the winter swim championships. You're absolutely right, Tim. We have 17 indoors, indoor pools. We, we start competing middle of November, city finals will be the first weekend in January. So they will have basically five dual meets to swim from. Again, the idea is to get to those centers, get involved, and become competitive. We have enough centers to do that with. Okay, our next event in the girls breaststroke, ages 15 to 17. In lane number one, it's Lisa LaRich from Estabrook. In lane number two, Nicole Schiffbauer. In lane number three, Mary Crofta from Stella Walsh. In lane number four from Thurgood, Deanna Reed. In lane number five from Warsaw Pool, Megan Daniels. And in lane number six from Thurgood Marshall, Deanna Sturtmeyer. You know, I love to see these 15, 17 year olds, Tim. These are our lifeguards in the, in the next couple, next year or so. So I am very, very interested in these 15 to 17 year old young ladies <laughs> and men. You know, because we are always in a desperate need in the city of Cleveland for, for qualified individuals to be lifeguards for the city. And basically, that's where we get our kids from. Again, for our viewers that are just joining us, you're watching CLV TV 35. It's the Cleveland Swim Championships. Pretty, pretty close start, Luther. Yeah, we started pretty close. We got, we got basic desert. We got four laps to do here. This is, we're only 50 now. You know, normally those kids would try to start making their moves around, around about the 75 yard distance. You know, and as long as you can stay in striking distance of the first place swimmer, you have a chance. Okay. You know, you got to stay close. Okay. Now in this type of race, because they have to finish with their hands on the touch pad, when they go for their laps and, and they turn to start their next lap, do they have to touch that way or can they flip no, on you, this type or they have no, to touch with their hands? There's no time? flipping on the breaststroke. Okay. You have to have a two hand touch there and a butterfly on both ends of the pool. Okay. You know. So the only thing you can do there is just basically is a two hand touch with a speed turn. Okay. This is the final leg here? This is the final leg. Mary from Stella Walsh. Crofta is in the lead. About to touch the pad. Great time, 134.31. 31.34. Okay. She beat her time. She beat her qualifying time. That she did. And that's excellent. When, long, when a kid can reduce his qualifying time when it comes to the city finals, mm -hmm. It's a great improvement for the kid. It gives him something to work for. Now, this time of 134.31 mm -hmm. probably is the best time. She'll take that time this fall okay. and see can she reduce it even further. Well, good. You know, Luther, we, we see a lot of the older kids, but what about, the, we talk about the beginning of an aquatics program, you know, tots and parents. Can you tell us a little bit about that program? Yes, we, are, we have a Tots and Parents program, and this program is basically a program that the parent can bring their, their toddlers and any kid that's not four feet tall into our pool areas to get them acclimated to the water. Now, this program is not intended to teach a kid to swim. It's intended to get a kid adjusted to being in the water, and the parent is there as, as a safeguard. 
uh, the, we found, and the Red Cross has found, that as long as the kid is in the water with his parents, he's more, much more relaxed, and, and, and we can get him to do a lot more things as far as blowing bubbles, sticking his face up under the water. It's an excellent program to get your kid started in at an early age. Again, that program is not intended to teach a kid to swim. It's intended to get a kid acclimated to the water. And from there, he can progress into various levels of swimming from beginners all the way up, you know. It's an excellent program for a parent to get involved with. So mom and dad, you got that toddler, that's the program to head him into. And when we come back, we're gonna have the medal presentation of the city champions in the breaststroke event. I've had the same friend since I was a little kid. But this year, some of them started playing with these other kids. I guess there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's cool making new friends and all, but they weren't like us. They were, you know, different. And I heard my big brother saying some pretty bad stuff about people like them. But they seemed pretty cool, and we had a pretty good time. So, well, maybe my brother doesn't know everything. Hey, Carlos, come on, we need you. Don't be afraid. Be your friend. They're still around. And these diseases could be life-threatening if you don't protect your baby from them. Full protection takes around five visits for shots, starting by two months and ending by age two. Ask if your baby is up to date on every visit to your doctor. Or if you don't have a doctor, call 1-800-232-2522 to find out where to get your baby shots. When it comes to immunization, your baby's counting on you. Music was loud and we was laughing and joking around. And three shots fired. He was killed. It really hurt. Why did this have to happen? for the future Olympians, and here they are at the City of Cleveland Swim Meet at Forest Hills Pool. We're gonna go to the medal presentation of our breaststroke champions. As aquatics manager, will hand the awards out. First is eight to 10 champion, Richard Wyma from Estabrook. Eight to 10 girl, Elizabeth Alcesser from Estabrook. 11 and 12 boy, Mike Maxwell Agnew from John F. Kennedy. 11 to 12, Rachel Boyd from Estabrook. 13, 14 champion, Steve Noga from Estabrook. 13, 14 girl is Bridget Cox. Talked about her earlier, Luther. 15, 17 boy, Brian Williams from Carouche Pool. And rounding it out is Mary Crofta from Stella Walsh. Those are our city champions in the girls' breaststroke event. Before we uh, go into the backstroke, we want to give you the scores of today's meet so far. Um, leading the pack in a resounding. We look at the top three, Luther. We had talked about the John F. Kennedys, the Stella Walshes, Neff, Thurgood Marshall. But it's been all Estabrook as they lead 71 to 19 at this point of the meet. And it looks like it could be an all Estabrook day. Seems that way, Tim. We're starting to get into the into the backstroke and the butterfly event for Estabrook, and they are awfully strong in those events. <laughs> okay, Luther, I'm gonna let you and Desiree take it from here. Well, Luther, we're getting ready to go into the backstroke, as you mentioned. Can you give us an idea of what to look for and what the stroke is all about? Okay, well, quite naturally, as I just mentioned, Estabrook is very strong in the backstroke events. Uh, this stroke is basically just the reversal of the front crawl. It's the back crawl. Okay. And the difference is they're swimming on their back instead of their front. All right. That is the biggest difference. In his stroke, you will probably see, again, your flip turns. You don't have to touch with two hands with this stroke. You, okay. you will see your flip turns and your speed turns. Okay. It, are they going once down the, the lane, or are they? Okay, again, the, the eight to 10 year olds will swim one length. Okay. Everyone else, 11 and 12, will swim 50, which is two length. 13 and 14 will swim 50, which is two length. And you're okay. 15 and 17. Again, we'll have four. to swim four. OK. Mm. OK, we're getting ready to start. The, they're getting the uh, swimmers prepared here As to I, take their places. You're right, eight to 10s will start 
closest to us, so they had okay. to take a little time to move those swimmers into this area. Okay, and as you said, Estabrook seems to be the strong. Yeah, Estabrook is very strong in, in, in the backstroke events. I don't. We have uh, we have Rich Weimer mm -hmm. who's swimming out of lane four, which is not the qualifying best time, but does uh -huh. not necessarily mean he won't win this heat. Okay, yeah, we are seeing a lot of uh, faster times than what's been listed as far as qualifying for the meet, huh? Right, it, 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 comes, from, it comes from competitiveness. You know, you, you get in a pool with a bunch of, with a group of kids who are better swimmers than the ones you normally race against. Mm -hmm. It makes you, it, it builds your endurance, it gets your blood rushing a little faster. Mm -hmm. Subsequently, you arise to the challenge. Okay. And this is subject to happen here with this Weimer kid. You okay. know, he seems to be able to rise to whatever challenge is, is confronting him. All right. Well, we're checking to see if they're ready to start the race. I see the swimmers lined up, so I'll start by saying in lane one, there's Kyle Beck from Low Pool, Tyrone Williams in lane number two from John F. Kennedy, lane number three, Shane Lane from Halloran. Lane number four, Richard Wyma from Estabrook. Lane number five, William Mathis from Thurgood Marshall. And lane number six, Kevin Williams from Fairfax. Again, Desi, these, these are the eight to 10 year olders. A lot of these kids, again, just come out of our Learn to Swim programs mm -hmm. and they're still in the, in the learning infant stage of competitive swimming. Okay. A couple years down the road, when we, when we see the city finals, nine times out of 10, you will see these same kids who will move up in age brackets. They get to know one another. Mm -hmm. They get to expect to swim against one another. Okay. So it's a very, at this age, it's very competitive. We're off to a good start here, Desi. Great start. And as you can see, these kids are all out. They're barreling all out. You don't have uh -huh. to rest with this here stroke. Uh -huh. You're only swimming one lap, so you don't have to worry about the endurance factor here. Let me ask you this, as they're swimming, what should, what should they either be thinking about or looking at in order to stay straight? I've always wanted to ask them. What you do, you focus. Winner, lane, lane number four. Lane Excuse number four. me, Richard Weimha uh, from Estabrook. As we said, he was not, he did not have the best qualifying time, but he rose to the challenge. Yes, he did. What a swimmer wants to do, does it stay focused, is, is concentrate on your techniques and your mechanics. Okay. You don't want to look at the swimmer next to you Either lane, you don't worry about the one in front of you or behind you. Okay. You want to stay focused within your own framework. All right. Work on your mechanics and your body positioning, and that will take you to where you want to go. Okay. Once you start looking around, moving your head, looking around, mm -hmm. trying to see what other swimmers at, you're losing valuable seconds. You're slowing, the, you're slowing your pace down. All right. All right, going into the, the girls' backstroke, ages 10 and under. Um, they're hey. still preparing for that. But let me ask you this. Before we start the race, as they're racing, especially on their back, if they were to go into another lane, for instance, not that we've seen it today, but would that be a disqualifying uh, Yes, you can. Factor? You cannot You cannot interfere with another swimmer. Okay. Uh, this is the reason why it, in swim meets you see lane markers or, or lane lines dividing the lanes off so that, that can't happen. Okay. Uh, most of the time what a swimmer will do, and this will slow their time down also, they will swim into the, into the lane line, okay. hit the lane line, maybe get their arm caught up in the lane line, something on those and we'll slow their time down. But that's what those lane lines will do. That will keep them from interfering with, okay. with another swimmer. Okay, so as long as they don't cross over that lane line, then they're okay as far as eligibility. Right, they, they will have a very difficult time of crossing over that lane line. Okay, well as the girls line up, we have one lane change in lane number one. We have Lindsay Turner, I believe from Neff Pool. We have lane number two, Shannon Cox from Estabrook. Lane number three, we have Elizabeth Elsesser from Estabrook as well. Lane number four, Katie Farron from Estabrook. And lane number five, you have to help me out, Luther, here. My Mayuna Cleveland from Thurgood Marshall. Lane number six, Angie Sears from Lincoln Pool. into the water. Right, there's no diving on, there's no diving on the backstroke event. You start from in the water. Okay. And the, the key is to get a good start, a Use good push. Use those legs? Lose those legs. Okay. Legs are, legs, legs are more powerful than arms. Okay. You know, a lot of swimmers don't realize that, but your legs are, are a lot more stronger than your arms when it comes to swimming. Okay, Elizabeth looks like she's in the lead. Looks like she's going to touch first. Elizabeth Elsesser. 
She does. Lane three. 19.22 as a time, faster time. Great. That okay. means these kids have been practicing. Oh, yes. And it looks like in the El Cesar's family, the tradition is still uh, <laughs> surviving here. Very, very strong. <laughs> <laughs> and Esther Brooke is staying within their, uh, their expectations as finishing strong in the events. You know, you, you look at Esther Brooke, and, and each year, a team comes, a team steps forward. A couple years ago, last year was Thurgood Marshall. Team was stepped forward to give them a challenge. Uh -huh. The fall of the year, I'm looking for a great challenge from both Thurgood Marshall, mm -hmm. JFK, and Stella Walsh to step forward. Again, Stella Walsh's team is split to, between like two pools. Yeah. And, and that hurts them as far as when it comes down to a team scores, overall mm -hmm. team competition. Okay. You know, and. Uh, the fall of the year, that team will be back together as one unit. As one unit. Right. Okay, well, we'll look forward to that. Uh, right now, we're preparing for the boys' backstroke ages 11 to 12. And I, if I'm correct, this one is the 50-yard, the or they, they go twice. Right, 50 down yards. The lane. Okay. Up and 50 back. 50 yards up and back. Okay, as they're preparing for that, I'll go into the... The lanes, in lane number one, we're going to have Romero Cleveland from Thurgood Marshall. Lane number two, we're going to have Mike Rinaldi from Warsaw Pool. In lane number three, we're going to have Donald Black from Karush Park. Lane number four, we're going to have Mitch Bear from Estabrook. Lumber, lane five, we're going to have Joe Wyma from Estabrook. And lane number six, we have the brother Matt Wyma from Estabrook. What we have here, Desi, is, is that we have 50 yards. Now, this is where your turn becomes very important here. Okay. You know, a swimmer can swim into that wall, but if he doesn't come off that wall and get a good push off that wall with a glide to it, he hurts himself as far as time is concerned. Okay. So practicing swimming off the wall becomes very, very important. Okay, one lane change in lane number two. Instead of Mike Rinaldi from Warsaw, we do have Larry Mathis from Thurgood Marshall. So we do have two Thurgood Marshall swimmers in the pool in lane number one and two. Okay. Race is underway. It's a tight race between lane number three. And it was four at the turn and... Uh, Donald Black from Carouche has been able to maintain the lead. It appears that he will be touching first. And he does, lane three. Lane three. Donald Black from Carouche. All right. 406. Over here. Excellent time. He's from the School of Arts. He's a seventh grader. He's 12 years old. He's. His awards include the Merit Roll, Perfect Attendance, Math, Science, and Art Award. And Donald's favorite role model is his mother. Oh, what a great role model. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. Again, those, those swimmers that swim out of those, out of those uh, summer pools at Carouche. Now, see, those swimmers next year, this mm -hmm. fall, will probably end up swimming for JFK. Okay. So that's going to make their team that much stronger. Okay. All right, well, now we're getting ready for the girls' backstroke, ages 11 to 12. And in those lanes will be Natasha Bosca from Michael Zone. In lane number two, we have a lane change. We will have Crystal Mathis from Thurgood Marshall. In lane number three, we will have Julie Bybell from Estabrook. Mm -hmm. Lane number four, we will have Rachel Boyd from Estabrook Recreation Center as well. Lane number five, Rachel Shia. From, from Estabrook. And lane number six, Mary Beth Gannon from Impet. Okay. Into the pool they go. Ready to push off. And looking at these times, the, all of these times are very close. Mm -hmm. Very close times. It's okay. going to be interesting to see what, what comes out of this here. All right. We've had a strong start from all the lanes. We got lane number three just swam into the lane line when you was asking about uh -huh. swimming into another lane. Right. She just hit it twice. Okay. And she's still competing for third place at this point, swimming into that lane line. Uh -huh. It's going to make a big difference whether she hits this lane line on the second leg going back, okay. whether she wins this or not. 
Now, I do see some girls, um, some competitors in the, in the uh, races are wearing goggles or the, uh, things for their eyes. Does that really help or deter? Uh, it's, it's, it's preference. Preference, okay. Right. Strictly preference, okay. And she's swimming, she's hits the lane oh, line again. Oh. She's still lane four. She lost it by hitting the lane yes, line three did. times. Rachel Boyd from Estherbrook is the winner. Yes, okay. Julia hit the lane line three times. Each time she was in first place all the way down. She hit it twice coming in and mm -hmm. twice going back. Mm -hmm. Hurts her. Okay. And that, if you notice, she swam from one side of the lane to the other. Right. That takes time. Okay, and she stopped to, t to take a look at where she was, do I notice, just before she touched to finish the slows, race. Slows her down. Rachel Boyd is, attends Our Lady of Good Counsel. She's an eighth grader. She's 12 years old. Her awards include merit roll and softball. And uh, one of the comments her coach made about her is that she always has a smile on her face and always gives 100%. Okay. No, you cannot. When these kids at this age, sometimes it's hard to teach them to swim straight. Okay. But eventually, I'm pretty sure with the coaching over the Estherbrook, she will not have that problem this fall. Okay. But she would have won this event. Mm -hmm. But she hit the lane hit line the lane four line. times. Twice coming in on the first lap, twice going back. I didn't knocked, bring that question up to give anyone bad luck. Knocked you know her out of first, <laughs> knocked her out of first place. Okay. Moving on to the boys' backstroke, ages 13 to 14, and going into the lanes. In lane number one, we have John called called where? Cauldron from Meyerpool. Steve Nogan from Estabrook Recreation. Roger St. Clair from Carouche Park in lane number three. In lane number four, we have Matt Kurtz from Michael Zone. In lane number five, we have Mike Blair from Estabrook Recreation Center. And in lane number six, we have Anthony Rinaldi from Warsaw. Desi, in lane number three, Roger St. Clair from Carouche Park is a no-show. This okay. kid, uh, I got information last night that this kid broke his thumb mm. in a Muni football game, which he's trying to play for a Muni team, so he's not here to okay. swim today. And it's going to hurt Carouche Park quite a bit because this kid... In the team standings, yes. This kid has won a couple first places in the district meets that puts him in best time in, in three events. Okay. All right, it looks like we may have... More lane changes here, okay. In lane number three, to replace Roger, we have Robert Rashid from John F. Kennedy. And in lane number six, to replace Anthony Rinaldi from Warsaw, we have Mark Makeupson from Thurgood Marshall. Okay. All right, we're ready to go. Okay, so based on the time, we're looking at lane three. Oh, well, that yeah. was before the, the lane uh, right. the alternate, so. So St. Clair is out okay. as far as this the best is, uh, time is, 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 is concerned. As we found out, a lot of these times don't hold true right, anyway. Right. So let's see what we have here. Strong start by everybody. These kids, are, these kids are comfortable in the water. We have another swimmer in lane number, lane number three mm -hmm. swimming into the ropes again. Okay. Making that turn. Decent Lane turn. Lane number five right now looks like they're in the lead. And I'm not going to ask you what center that's from. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've said Esther name throughout the uh, whole meet thus far. Yeah, and he's on, you don't want it again. Lane number five. Matt Mike Blair. Mike Blair from Estabrook. He attends Central. Uh, he's in the eighth grade. He's 13 years old, he has perfect attendance. And the comments from his coach, Mike shared most valuable swimmer award in 1993-94. You know, this year, Desi, we have, uh, we chose a, an outstanding swimmer in each age category this year. Normally we just have a boys outstanding swimmer and a girls outstanding swimmer. We have an outstanding swimmer in the eight to 10 bracket, 11 and 12, 13, 14, 15 and 17 age bracket. So we're gonna give a few more plaques to be awarded to these outstanding <laughs> okay. swimmers. All right, we're getting ready to prepare for the girls' backstroke, ages 13 to 14. And in lane number one, we will have Chris, Crystal Watson from Thurgood Marshall. Let's give them a chance to get into okay, the lane. I think there's been a little trouble over the clerk's table getting these people lined up. So let's give them a chance to get into the lanes and, okay. and then we can 
find out exactly what we have here. Okay. Well, what do we see in this race? Looking strong, however. Uh... Well, Sarah Kurtz and, and, and Bridget Cox uh, have been swimming against each other probably for the last two seasons. And, and Sarah Kurtz is, uh, is an excellent swimmer in, in, in the backstroke and the butterfly events. I'd be very surprised if those two individuals do not place one, two in this event. Okay. All right, we shall see how they, how they do. You know, the, the Michael Zone Recreation Center takes a lot of pride in their events also. Teresa Carl, who's, congratulations, Teresa, on your new arrival, daughter. Dave Kovac is the other coach over there, and Karen Chorba, who works as a district supervisor for us during the summer, takes a lot of pride in Sarah Kurtz. They worked with Sarah quite a bit in the last two years to build her up. Okay, lane number one, we have Crystal Watson from Thurgood Marshall. Lane number two, Tatiana Black from Glenville Recreation Center. Lane number three, we have Bridget Cox from Estabrook. Lane number four, we have Sarah Kurtz from Michael Zone. Lane number five, we have Jen Maluka from Stella Walsh. And lane number six, Felicia Elderman from Lake Pool. All of these times, all of these times are relatively close. You know, you have Sarah, you have Bridget Cox here swimming at 38-30 in in as a qualifying time. Let's see this the, the improve on that time here. Okay, we we're off to a good start. One lane change. In lane number two, we have Sabrina Bosca from Zone Recreation Center replacing Tatiana Black from Glenville. Bridget looks awfully, awfully smooth and awfully smooth. You notice, you notice the flip? Yes. One time on a, one turn on the stomach, flip. You can do that flip as long as you do not take any strokes to the wall. Okay. No strokes was taken. The flip was good. All right. And so you can see that that basically Bridget Cox is uh, <laughs> in first place here. She's okay, an excellent three. swimmer. She's Bridget an excellent Cox. swimmer. Improved her time also. She's swimming 35-40 here. She's swimming 38-30 to qualify. So these kids are knocking these seconds off. They're getting, getting, getting a lot of practice. She attends NR Middle School. She's an eighth grader. She's 13 years old. She's on the honor roll and participates in track. And according to her coach, Bridget has a lot of potential, as we've seen today. I would be surprised if, if, if a swim team coach the siege this meet on TV doesn't get in contact with Esther Brooke to get Bridget Cox and, and people like Megan Daniels, Sarah Kurtz. Those kids should be swimming mm -hmm. very competitively in high school. It's, it's, it's just, mm -hmm. just amazing that the Cleveland Public Schools do not have competitive swimming because mm -hmm. they have some excellent swimmers in this city. They could definitely draw from these Oh, meets. definitely, most definitely. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a kid like Chris Shockley that's a lifeguard at this pool here. Mm -hmm. He swam for St. Ignatius last year as a junior on, on their junior junior team and did uh -huh. did an excellent job with it. You okay. Know. All right. Well, hopefully they'll be viewing this today and they'll get a lot of potential. Uh... I have no doubt. <laughs> Sarah Kirsch has already been contacted by one of these schools to swim. Okay. So uh, it's quite a bit potential here. All right, now we're heading into the boys' backstroke, ages 15 to 17. In lane number one, we should have Craig Conway from Estabrook Recreation. In lane number two, Damian Bernardo from Michael Zone. In lane number three, we should have Mike Wyma from Estabrook Recreation. In lane number four, Brian Williams again from Karouche Park. Lane number five, Sean Campbell from Lincoln. And a lane change for lane number six, we have Edwin Floors from Lincoln Pool. Again, here we're swimming uh, 100 yards. The key is to stay close to the first place swimmer so when you get into that middle of that third lap, going into the fourth, you're in a position to make your move. Okay. But you have to stay close. You can't let, let this guy get away from you the first two lanes and, mm -hmm. and use all, and spawn all your energy trying to catch him. You got to stay close to him. Okay, so this is the endurance as well. Right. Okay. We're seeing some turns here. Well, Mike Weimer is, uh, saying no one's going to stay close yeah, to me. <laughs> <laughs> he's not going to let anyone stay close. Uh, he likes to ride that rope. Yeah, he rides that lane line. He hit it mm -hmm. down here earlier. I see he's moved back in the middle of the pool. Right. But he has a great awareness of where he's at. See, but yeah, he's, he, yes, he does. He's not going to let anyone stay that close to him to make a move on him. Okay. In order for them to move, they're going to have to move now because he has a good right. three body lengths ahead of him. Okay. 
Let's see what he does off this wall here. Well, we have a close, uh, close tie here in uh, lane four and five for second place. Oh yeah, that's what the, that's what the race is at for second place. The first place mm -hmm. swimmer has a half a pool length right. on. Him. We'll have to see what they do here. Okay, lane number three it is. Mike Wyma, Mesterbrook. Time. What's that? 116.60. One, one right. His qualifying time was 115.66, so uh, he lost a few seconds there. Okay. Mike Wyma, as mentioned before, attends St. Ignatius, and he's 14 years old in the ninth grade. He has a merit role, perfect attendance, participates in basketball and football. And from his coach's comments, Mike won best overall male swimmer in 1989 and 1992. You know, I, I believe Mike. I believe Mike swims for that St. Ignatius team too. But let me just point out: during the summer months, we would permit these kids who swim for the for the St. Ignatius team or any swim team to compete. Mm -hmm. During the fall of the year, when that team is swimming, they are not permitted to put, compete in city recreation swim. Okay. You know. All right. Only reason Chris Shockley's not here, he's a lifeguard this year. Other than that, <laughs> he would be able to He'd compete. He'd be here, huh? Right. All right. <laughs> Welcome back, Tim. Thanks, Des. It sounds like we had some great competition. We saw some real close races. And again, our uh, next event, Luther, is the girls' backstroke, ages 15 to 17. Lined up in number one is Deanna Sturtmeyer from Thurgood Marshall. In lane two, from Cadell Recreation is Kim Ward. In lane three, Nicole Schiffbauer from Neff Pool. In lane number four, Mary Croft from Stella Wall. She'll go after her second medal today, Mary Crofta. In lane number five, Julie Wyma from Estabrook. And in lane six, from Thurgood Marshall, Nima Mohamed from Thurgood Marshall in lane six. Tim, this shift bower, Nicole shift bower, Megan Daniels, and Julie Weimer are all extremely competitive. All three of those girls, along with the Studmeyer young lady from Thurgood Marshall, all of them are competitive, very competitive. So this should be a very interesting race. Again, here we're swimming four lanes, 100 yards. The key is to have enough to finish. You notice the flip turn there again in lane number three. Lane number four, excuse me. You can use that turn as long as you do not stroke on your front when you when you flip over to make the flip. So these, these young people watch these Olympians swim and they pattern themselves after them. And a lot of them become very efficient. They're, watch, see the flip? No pull. Beautiful. Nicole Schiffbauer from Neff Pool with the flip turn. And again, Luther, a credit has to go out to the swim team coaches that have taken the time to teach them the fundamentals of the strokes and the proper mechanics of swimming. You know, Tim, I've been, I've been telling people for, for quite a few years, you know, we have some people in the aquatics area here in the city of Cleveland, and I feel that basically it's second to none. You know, they take a lot of pride in what they do. They take a lot of pride in their jobs. And I've been telling the commissioner of recreation, the mayor, the director that I would with ways to put my people up against anyone in the recreational field as far as, as an area of aquatics. They're dedicated people. And again, we see our winner. We're waiting for the... Lane three. There's Antonio Elmore giving us the signal. It was Nicole Schiffbauer. Again, we saw the the excellent of the fundamentals, the flip turns that Nicole had done in the girls' backstroke, 15 to 17. An eighth grade to, a student at St. John's Lutheran, plays a little volleyball, and the coach talked about the potential of her being a great swimmer. We saw that today. She's an excellent swimmer. Tim, the butterfly event is, is, is getting ready to come up. You know, two years ago, we, we, we implemented this event into a, a competitive stroke for our indoor swim meets. I've had the physical directors who have been hounding me for years, hey, let's swim the fly. So we started swimming the fly. And since we started swimming the fly, these kids have gravitated to this stroke unbelievable. 
You know, I remember when we first started swimming, we might have maybe two or three kids on the team who could actually swim the butterfly. Now, I believe every team member has at least two kids in each age group who could swim this stroke. And this is the same thing that's going to happen to the individual medley. If you notice, we're swimming in the age, larger age groups here, the 15 to 17, boys and girls. We hope to, to improve on that this fall by swimming in the 13 to 14 age group. These kids have gravitated to the medley one, two, three, and to the fly. They love it. You know, we've talked about all the events here going on today. And truthfully, Luther, when we look for those outstanding swimmers in the, the family that's orientated into swimming, we hear about the Elsessers. And right now, we're going to take a time out and go over to Desiree Powell, who is with Mr. Elsesser. Hi, we're at poolside here with a parent, Mr. L. Susser, who has quite a few children involved within the city uh, swim meet um, as far as lifeguarding as well as swimmers. How are you, Mr. L. Susser? I'm fine. Good. Uh, from what I understand, you have three children, and if you could give their names and what they do within the city uh, recreation swim meets and things. Sure. The oldest one is Matthew, uh, age 17, and he's the coach for the Estabrook swim team. The second one is almost 16, Margaret, and she is a lifeguard with Estabrook. And the youngest one is 10 years old, Elizabeth, and she's a swimmer. Okay. Now, they've all three been involved within the Estabrook swimming program. Um, how about yourself? What, what got the family tradition started? Um, I did swim in junior high and high school in uh, Lansing, Michigan, at Eastern High School. Okay. And that trailed down to the family participating in the water sports at Estabrook, I take it. It is. Okay. We've seen a lot of your children here today, one participating in the meet. And I understand in the winter, uh, your two oldest children, Matt and Margaret, also compete in the uh, activities that the uh, swim meets offer in the winter? Yes, when they're uh, not working for the pool as lifeguard or coach, then yes, they're able to compete. Okay. And they do. If there's one thing you could say, because I, I see you're here and there's quite a few parents uh, supporting their kids. Is there anything that you could say to the parents out there that might be able to get them more involved in, in getting the kids involved in the swim, swim meets as well as in the recreation center? Yes, I would say, you know, just to feel the enthusiasm that it's your kid out there swimming and you yelling and coaching on mine, it's, it's a thrill. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Professor, for your time. We want to toss right back to Tim and Luther for the remainder of the swim meet. Thanks, Desiree. Um, you know, Luther, we've talked about, and here Mr. Elsesser talks about the aquatic program, but truthfully, there's a base. We've talked about tots and parents. Now, the next step after they go and from tots to parents, we talk about learn to swim classes. Can you tell us a little bit about learn to swim and maybe eventually on to lifeguarding? Right. Tim, Tim, what we have here. Tim, what we have here is uh, when we talk about learn to swim, learn to swim classes, is that we take a kid, a novice kid, maybe who who's been around the pool just basically playing, but basically do not know how or the fundamentals for swimming. We'll take that kid and put him in a swim program, which we call a beginner, beginner swim program. Right now, the Red Cross has changed their curriculum. They call it level one swimming. But basically, teach, teach them how to do prone flow, prone glide, back guide, back flow, and, and the breathing techniques, along with some of the safety aspects of being around a swimming pool, like no running, no pushing. Maybe teach them how to use a reach pole or throw a ring buoy. And it's a progressive type of a type of program where a kid would go from basically shallow water, learning techniques, then he would move into a little deeper water where, where the technique would maybe change a little bit. And there he'd learn how to thread water, change directions, maybe swim a little lo longer underwater, maybe swim a lo longer distance on the top of the water, and work with maybe the, the cross stroke, the back stroke, and the breast stroke in, in those events. And as I say, it's progressive. It leads all the way up into lifeguarding. Okay, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we are going to meet the swim champions in the backstroke event.
So, whose influence are you under? Make your mama cry. Lose your best friend. Die, die in early death. Do you really want to be in a gang? Think about it. Peace out. I tell you, LC, you got to be real tough and smart in order to be a champion in this in this United States. No, you don't, man. To be a champion in the ring, man, all you need is a little muscle, man. That's Ooh, man, you're both right just a little bit. You got to be just chilling. The macho man, Randy Savage, with my friend, with my friend. We're all telling you two things. Stay in school and say no to drugs. Am I right? That's right. Am I right? That's right. Oh, yeah. Dig it. Hi, welcome back to the City Final Recreation Center Swim Meet. We're getting prepared for our ward presentation for the uh, backstroke. And we're going to start off with the winner from the ages 10 and under, Richard Wyma from Estabrook. 10 and under female, Elizabeth L. Sesser from Estabrook. Winner of the ages 11 to 12 boys, Donald Black from Carouche Park. The girls, 11 to 12 backstroke, Rachel Boyd from Estabrook. Winner of the boys, ages 13 to 14 backstroke, Mike Blair from Estabrook Recreation Center. Girls backstroke, ages 13 to 14, Bridget Cox, again from Estabrook Recreation Center. Boys, ages 15 to 17, Mike Wyma, Estabrook Recreation Center. And last but not least, girls, 15 to 17, Nicole Chef. Bauer from Neff Pool. Congratulations. Okay, we're getting ready for this butterfly event that was added for the boys 8 to 10. And again, Luther, this is uh, an added event that you had mentioned to earlier. It'll be for all the age groups, 8 to 10, 11 to 12, 13, 14. This is really our final event before we get into the Crescendo Relay teams. This is our final event for for the relay team, Tim. The thing that I want to caution our viewers about, these young men basically probably have just started swimming this event about a year in competition. So they're still a little rough on the edges, but we expect to have some fine races out of this event. But okay, we're gonna go to lane number one from Lake Pool, Jose Concepcion. In lane number two from Thurgood, David Cleveland. In lane three from Estabrook, Richard Wyma. In lane four from Thurgood Marshall, William Mathis. In lane five from John F. Kennedy, Tyrone Williams. And in lane six from Stella Walsh, Ray Stuckupper. Now, Luther, am I correct in saying that this is one of the most difficult strokes? Yeah, this stroke is very difficult to learn, Desi. You have the body movement in this stroke is, is similar to that to a dolphin. Mm -hmm. You have a dolphin kick, your arms are, are, are totally out of the water, they recover out of the water, and it takes a lot of coordination to swim this stroke. Well, good. And you say they've only had a year background? A year background with this stroke. So they've been practicing it, but the kids love the stroke. I see. Yeah, they, they love this particular stroke, and they get a, a lot of gratification out of being able to swim it. This is one lap down. One lap down, eight to 10 year olders. Great Lane time. Three. Lane three. Again, we can see it was Richard Wyma from Estabrook, time of 20.72. Again, to qualify, it was a 20 point even. Uh, he's a uh, fourth grade student at Blessed Sacrament, nine years old, on a roll, in perfect attendance. And we've been calling the Wyman name all afternoon. <laughs> all afternoon, Tim, and he swam at 18.25. Chopped down his time by two seconds. That's great. Again, it's a solid foundation of the aquatics program that Luther has talked about all afternoon. For the viewers that are watching, this is where to start your children. Get them involved in aquatic programs in the Cleveland Recreation Department. Our girls, 10 and under butterfly in lane number one from Thurgood Marshall, Marquita Durant. 
In lane two from Estabrook, Katie Farron. Lane three from Estabrook, Elizabeth Elsesser. Lane four from Estabrook, Shannon Cox. In lane five from Thurgood Marshall, Miana Cleveland. And in lane six from Estabrook, Jessica Sutak. After talking to uh, Elizabeth's father, Elizabeth L. Hesser from Esterbrook, she basically started to learn how to swim at the age of seven. She's now 10. And that's what it takes, Desi. You got to start these kids early if you want them to be competitive. Mm -hmm. You know, you get them into the pool, they show that you show that you're interested in what they're doing, they will not disappoint you. And it looks like she's going to touch first. Yes. That's Lane she does. three. 1928 the time. Without a doubt, Elizabeth and these Weimers have to be in running for the outstanding swimmers in those age brackets because <laughs> she has been a terror today. She's uh, you been know, consistent. You know, you always think of the, the sports, those cleanup hitters and the ones that are doing all the scoring, but it's been the Elsessers and the Weimers putting on the <laughs> points for that Estabrook team here today. I mean, that's 10 points for the first place winner. That's 10 points. And that's a, that's, a, that's a spread of three points between you and the second place swimmer. Mm -hmm. It's hard to overcome that. Okay, in our next event in the butterfly, it's uh, boys 11 and 12 years old. In uh, lane number one, and again, we're looking at them lining up. As we can see in lane number one from John F. Kennedy, it's Ryan Moulton. In lane two from Thurgood Marshall, Larry Mathis. In lane three from Estabrook, Joe Wyma. In lane four from Estabrook, Mitch Bear. In lane five, Matt Wyma. Now this, Luther, is this fair? Matt Wyman and Joe in the same one? <laughs> well, Tim, I don't know how fair it is. It's fair compared to times. They had the best times in the city. Okay, and rounding him out from Tromba, Anthony Cavada in lane number six. <laughs> We're off to a good start. In lane number three, Joe Wyman didn't wait, waste any time with taking that first stroke. <laughs> Now, you know the Wyma parents are probably saying, we're gonna, we want one and two. Well, of course. <laughs> no other way. Or a tie for first, one or the other. <laughs> right now, he's, he's swimming in first place. This must take a lot of arm, arm muscle. It takes a lot of arm muscle and leg, and leg movement. You got to actually, actually learn how to kick from the hips with this here. Anything short of kicking from the hips, you're not gonna get anything out of it. Okay. Do they take one and two or not? They got one, lane three. There was some great shots of Joe Wyman coming in as our city champion in the boys' butterfly, 11 and 12 years old. Sixth grader from Blessed Sacrament School. Merritt roll in basketball. Also, coach told us that as far as all the kids that he has, they're one of the most hardworkingest kids on the Estabrook team. Desi, you were talking about one and two. Mm -hmm. You must have had a crystal ball because exactly <laughs> where they swam, one and two. <laughs> I know, they made their yeah. parents proud. <laughs> Joe Wyman was first, his brother Matt second. Okay. Yeah, yes, great. Strong finishes. You know, you know, Luther, when, when we were talking about the foundation of the kids from parents and tots to learn to swim, to going on to be getting into lifeguarding, realistically, we talked a little bit about lifeguarding earlier, but does this, this really kind of leads to a job opportunity for those teenage kids? Great, without a doubt, Tim. I mean, the city of Cleveland itself during the summer months hire 240 lifeguards. Now that's just the city of Cleveland. We're not talking about all these other pools that's out there, hotel, motel pools, YMCA's. Everybody's looking for lifeguards during the summer. If a kid has the ability to swim and is in an age bracket, gets through a lifeguarding course, book work, water work, the possibility of him making money is great. You know, one of the things we probably have just taken for granted for our viewers, all these programs are free? All the aquatic programs, all the recreation programs in the city of Cleveland is free. We don't charge for any of our programs. The only thing we ask is the parents is to get involved, bring their kids in so we can work with them. Sounds like a deal they can't pass up. Oh, you can't beat that? No, where you go? Where can you get, where can you get this type of expertise facility for free? Nowhere. Okay, Except our, Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> our next event in the girls' butterfly, 11 and 12, in lane number one from Thurgood, Faith Wheeler. In lane two from Estabrook, Jenny Noga. In lane number three from Estabrook, Rachel Boyd. In lane number four, 
from Estabrook, C.C. Conway. In lane number five from John F. Kennedy, Taya Parle. And that rounds up our top five swimmers in the girls' butterfly 11 and 12. Okay. One, one, line, one lane down to, how's this go, Luther? So uh, I no, this is two. This, this is, is two, two laps. Okay, two laps. Yeah. In the butterfly event, we don't swim hundreds. Everybody swims, swim 50s except the eight to 10, they swim 25. Okay. Strong lead in, I mean, lane three has strong Rochelle strong. Boyd, she's very strong. You can see how far she comes out the water. Watch how far her shoulders come out the water. The whole top part of her torso is out, out the water in the pool. Very strong. Very strong. She has a good flow. Plus, she has a double clutch kick. She has a, a large kick, one small one. Mm -hmm. That's the way the butterfly is supposed to be swum. It's a double clutch. One large kick, one small one. Lane number three, Rachel Boyd, Estabrook. Right. The Estabrook team is, is dynamite. I wish I could swim for that team. <laughs> she attends Our Lady of Good Counsel. She's in the eighth grade. Rachel also has uh, had a merit role, and she's participating in softball. And according to her coach, she always has a smile on her face and gives that 110%. You know, if anyone had actually went over and watched Esther Brooks swim team practice, I mean, you see Mary Kersey running up and down the deck, yelling and screaming, jumping, and I mean, first time I thought I she thought she was a maniac, a mad woman. <laughs> You know, but she gets so involved in this here that it's hard to keep her still. Richard Reyes is the same way with Thurgood Marshall. I mean, he patrols the deck like he's a general, you know, and the swimmer's call him the general. <laughs> the general, huh? Okay, in our next event, Boys Butterfly, 13 and 14 in lane one, Mike Bear from Estabrook. Lane two from Stella Walsh, Jason Johnson. In lane three from Kavasik, Jim Bukowski. In lane four from Michael Zone, Matt Kurtz. And in lane five from Estabrook, Chris Manfreda. And in lane six from John F. Kennedy, Robert Rashid. They look ready, Luther. They're ready. They are ready. These kids, these kids can fly. Good fly, good fly. This is going to be a this is going to be a contested race between lanes three and four. Good push off the wall. Both of them are stroking pretty strong here. Lane number six isn't all that way out of it either. No, I see. Robert Rashid from JFK is, uh -huh. it, is in the race. Yes, he is. He's, he's in the race. He might be in first place, does he? Just he? might be. I think he might have it at the wall. Yes. Yes, he does. Lane six. An, lane out, six, an huh? outsider. 38, 36, I believe it is. Had the slowest qualifying time wins the heat. Yes, he did. And if you notice, his time went from, from 45-14 to 39-10. And you look at Robert Rashid, he's an eighth grader from Audubon Junior High. Perfect attendance, track, baseball. He also has been swimming in these meets for the last five years. And he walked away not only with the city title, but he's been their district champion for the last five years. You know, Robin Morton and Bodie Johnson is going to be ecstatic about this here. <laughs> They're going to go absolutely wild when this kid don't want the city title. They've been working with him. They've been preaching to him. They've been working with him on turns, starts, and it paid off. It did. It, it paid off today. And again, you know, Luther, uh, it, it really is a credit to our swim team coaches. You know, we mentioned about the two that are John F. Kennedy and brought back their champion, but there's many more that aren't here today that really have taken the time out to teach our kids properly. I mean, Tim, we have some people in our recreation center that do aquatic programs that I feel that are excellent individuals. We have Maynard Washington and Marcia Hagen over at Fairfax that they'll do a wonderful job. We have Jackie McGee, who's a newcomer out of Clark, that we're looking for big things out of. We have Joyce Almeida and Tom Garcia over at Sterling. You know, we have basically 28 full-time people. I can't mention all of them at this point, but they do an excellent job with our program. Okay, our next event in the Butterfly is the girls 13 and 14. In lane one from Michael Zone, Sabrina Bosca. In lane two, from Thurgood Marshall, Crystal Watson. In lane three, from Michael Zone, Sarah Kurtz. In lane four, from Estabrook, Bridget Cox. In lane five, from Stella Walsh, Jen Mullica. And in lane six, from Thurgood Marshall, Stephanie House. Here we 
we go. Now, take a look at the middle of this pool between lanes three and four. I mean, these, these two young ladies are strong. You see how far she rises out the water on the pool? Look at those turns. In lane four, look how far she rises out the water. I mean, uh -huh. excellent. Both of them are excellent. Now, does it help? I see some people who raise up with their head every other stroke or every couple of strokes. It, slow, that... it slows them down. Okay. It slows them down. Lane number four. Bridget Cox, 32.02. She attends NR Middle School. She's in eighth grade, 13 year old. She's an honor roll student. She participates in track. And according to her coach, Bridget is a very good swimmer, as proven today. Sarah Kurtz, Sarah Kurtz is an excellent swimmer out of Michael Zone, and this is her. This is basically her favorite stroke here. Okay, I believe we, we had the winner of Bridget Cox Lane Four. Right, Bridget Cox won the event. Okay, without a doubt. Sarah Kurtz is an excellent swimmer. Okay. Out of Michael Zone. Okay. Okay, Luther, in our last event before the crescendo, or no, we have two more in the butterfly. This is the 15, 17-year-olds. Right. This, we only swim 50 yards in this here, Tim. We will not swim hundreds in the, in the butterfly. Maybe next year we, we will move this up to a 100-yard event for the 15, 17, but we're swimming 50s today. Okay, in lane number one, from Michael Zone, Damian Bernardo. In lane two, from Estabrook, Craig Conway. In lane three from Estabrook, Mike Wyma. In lane number five from Neff Pool, Preston Mickelson. In lane number six, and again, I'm looking for Lenny Martin from Glenview. This should be a fast race for these, for these 15, 17 year olds. Off to a good start. Oh yes, these people in the middle of this pool is gonna be dynamite. Lane two, lane two has a good stroke, but he has his pool is not that great. If he had a greater pool, a better pool, he would be in this race. Well, when you look at the uh, Wyma in lane number three and Conway in lane two, it's obviously the pool has been the difference. Oh yes. Plus, you have a, a swimmer out there in lane number five who, who basically might have beat him to the wall. Lane three. Lane three. Who's the swimmer in lane five? Preston? Preston Michelson from Neff. Excellent. Excellent stroke. Second place for him. Hey, we're looking at Mike Wyma, our city champion in the boys' butterfly. Ninth grade student at St. Ignatius High School. Merritt Roll. Again, he's, he's going for another best male swimmer here in 1994 as he won it in 89 and 92. Our next event, and again, it's the final event of the butterfly, will be in the girls 15 to 17. And again, uh, when we look at the girls as well as the boys, again, it will be 50 yards, Luther. Still 50 yards. Still 50 yards. Nicole Schiffbauer out of Neff Poo is an excellent swimmer in this event, and so is Julie Weimer. We have, should have a really good, really good competition between those two, Tim. There should be one and two in this event. Well, the way Weimers are going, it's been their day. We'll see if they continue here to the end. I'm going with Schiffbauer on this one. <laughs> okay, in lane number one from Thurgood Marshall, Deanna Reed. In lane number two from Thurgood Marshall, Nima Hamid. In lane three, it's Luther's Choice, Nicole Schiffbauer from Neff. In lane four, it's Julie Weima from Estabrook. In lane number five, Lisa LaRich from Estabrook. And in lane number six, from Stella Walsh, it's Mary Crofta. You guys got me going out on the limb with this one, but I... <laughs> hey, you're the aquatics manager. We figure you have the inside the scoop. Swim picks of the week. <laughs> it's gonna be tough. Let's go, Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> the tight race in the beginning, Luther. Lanes three, four, and five. I think, 
I think Weimer's off the wall first. I think Nicole has her probably by a body, by half of a body length. Mm -hmm. The turn was the difference. And it can mean so much on a turn, Desi. You can, you can, you can pick up so much ground mm -hmm. or you can lose so much. We're, we're seeing it today. Well, it was Nicole Schiffbauer, Luther's choice, comes through as the city champion, the girls' butterfly, 15 to 17. You know, Luther, we talked about a lot of aquatic programs today. And one of them that we haven't mentioned so far is people with that get the arthritis and there's an arthritic exercise from. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Right, this arthritic exercise program, the city started approximately about three years ago. And what it does is a slow movement type of exercise that works on the joints and the limbs. For those individuals who have, do have arthritis, this is not for your heart cardiovascular exercise. It's a slow movement type exercise, gentle movement. They work with the, they start working from the fingers all the way down to the knees, the toes, the necks, the arms. And basically, we have a, quite a few sen bit of seniors in this particular type of exercise. They like it. They don't have to work. They work at their own pace. They don't have to keep up with anyone. And it's very relaxing. And one of the things the seniors told me they liked about the exercise more than anything else is that it gives them opportunity to communicate with one another while they're exercising, you know. And it's a great gathering place for them. You know, one of our recreation, the Cadell Recreation, the Joyce Alameda runs that program over there. Those ladies are there. I don't care how cold it is, Tim. They're there at 1 o'clock for this program. Okay, it sounds like an outstanding program. And we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to meet the city champions in the butterfly event. Welcome back to Forest Hills Pools, and we're going to meet the champions of the butterfly event. Again, these were youngsters from the ages of uh, 10 and under in our first age group. Richard Wyma from Estabrook, and the girls, Elizabeth Elsesser from Estabrook, picks up her third medal. And the boys' butterfly, Joe Wyma, adds to the family collection, as well as in the girls, it was Kelly Johnson from Estabrook. In the 1314, Robert Rashid from John F. Kennedy and Sarah Kurtz from Michael Zone. In the 1517, Mike Wyma picks up his third medal. And in the girls 15 to 17, it was Nicole Schiffbauer. Those are our champions in the Butterfly 15 to 17 event. Luther, when we look at all the, the program that we had today, the different programs, really there has to be some people behind the scenes that really make it click. Yes, uh, Tim, without a doubt, uh, our summer pool program takes a lot of work and effort to get it off the ground. You know, people come out and they see the lifeguards at the pool. Quite naturally, those lifeguards are very important to us. We take a lot of time with those people, getting them prepared for the summer. But that's not the tip of the iceberg. We have three other divisions that's involved in summer pools. and my. Congratulations and thanks goes out to those commissioners. Vern Robinson out of the property management. Park maintenance division helps us keep these areas clean for the participants that come along in our pools. And without a doubt, it goes all the way upstairs to the second floor out of the mayor's office. Mike White has supported summer pools, recreational programs for years. Diane Downey, along with our commissioner, Wayne Moss, and our new director, Oliver Spellman Jr., who has been very influential in getting these pools open this year for the summer. I cannot say enough for the summer staff at these pools. It hasn't been easy. As you know, in a couple of years, we've been having our problems with summer pools. This year, things ran pretty smoothly. We had a lot of help from the Cleveland Police Department, along with other commissioners and other workers at other divisions to make this thing go as well as it has. And again, I'd just like to thank the summer staff at these pools. I have one particular pool in particular I want to acknowledge, and this is Kathleen Carney and her staff over at Lincoln Pool. I think that pool basically did a traumatic turnaround from two years ago. I have talked with several adults over there who come and use the pool. They speak very highly of the personnel in that pool. And when you go by there, you can see it. OK, 
Okay, we talked about the commissioners. Well, at this time, we're gonna go to Desiree Powell and the Commissioner of Recreation, Wayne Moss. Hi, we're at Poolside with Commissioner Wayne B. Moss from the Division of Recreation. Thank you for being here today. Yeah, it's always good to be here. Uh, how is the uh, 1994 summer pool session going for recreation? How is the overall season? Oh, it's been phenomenal. We're coming up on the end of our pool season. And, you know, when it's all said and done, we're going to have close to 300,000 swimmers, uh, probably another 25,000 kids that we've taught uh, to swim and learn to swim classes. And so it's been a very enjoyable summer for me. The weather's been beautiful. And, hey, I can't wait to take it indoors now. <laughs> okay, recently Mayor White had a press conference in regards to how the efforts of the community, the uh, police, and recreation were going to be joint together. Can you explain that? Yeah, there's been uh, there's been a lot of uh, conversation in general feeling, I think, on behalf of uh, the public in general about crime escalating in our communities, uh, when in fact in our community, in our city, the crime rate has actually decreased. Uh, and so the other day, Mayor White uh, held a press conference to announce some of the statistics that are going on in terms of the crime rate uh, reduction. And a lot of that he attribute not only to community involvement, uh, citizens in the city coming to the forefront, being involved in activities and so forth, but also the partnership between the police, the community, and the Division of Recreation. Okay. Well, with the, the, the summit on violence that was just recently held downtown, what role or goals does recreation have involved with the, the summit on violence? Hey, I attended uh, most of the town hall meetings, and you know what seemed to come out of a lot of those meetings was uh, parents and folks saying, hey, kids need something to do. Uh, so I see us as being a, being a very integral part of the summit. Again, we did have workshops. There were community participants, and there's going to be an agenda that will be developed as a result of the summit. Uh, there'll be some 30-day issues, some 90-day issues, some one-year, and then some longer-range goals. And so I'm, I'm really looking uh, forward to implementing a number of these initiatives because they've been community-based. Uh, they have come from the people in our community, and that's really what it's all about. From what I understand, there's some good news that we may need to tell the viewers about a possible new rec center or a new pool, gunning pool, that may be opening up soon. Actually, we do have a rec center that will be opening on the far west side, uh, gunning rec center, located at West 156 in Puritus. Uh, should be opening at the first of the year, so I'm real, I'm real excited about it. There's been a devoid of recreational opportunities for wards 20 and 21, and so uh, this will help fill that need. Uh, but in addition to that, and hey, you kind of hear it at first, her it here first, uh, but we also are developing a new rec center for Luke Easter Park. Uh, I'm really excited because uh, there'll be a, a skating rink uh, along with the rec center, and so uh, it should be an exciting project. A lot of upcoming events scheduled for recreation, correct? Oh, no question about it. And again, over the past four years, uh, the mayor and the administration has committed uh, more than $25 million to upgrading our parks, our playgrounds, our rec facilities. And, you know, the mayor has said so eloquently on so many occasions that it's not enough just to ask young people to stay out of trouble without actually giving them viable opportunities. And so the administration has, st has still committed uh, to providing those opportunities to youngsters in the city. Well, we want to thank you for taking time out to talk to our viewers today and give us some up upbeat information about recreation as a whole. We want to go back to Tim and Luther now for the remainder of the swim meet. Thanks, Desiree. How true it is, Commissioner. It's been a total team effort and everybody pulling together to make it happen. Right now, Luther, our final event is the Crescendo Relay Teams. Can you tell our viewers a little bit how they're going to work? Yes, the Crescendo Relay Team is, is a combination of a swimmer. We will swim the freestyle or the American crawl, 200 meters will be the race. Each swimmer was 400 meters. Each swimmer will swim 50 yards, okay? You must have a swimmer from each age category, 8 to 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 17, and it makes no difference in the order in which they swim. I might have a 15-year-old that's swimming against a 10-year-old, vice versa. But each swimmer must swim 50 yards. Okay, our first event is going to be all the boys. The boys will go first in their Cassendo relay teams. In lane number one, they're going to be from Lincoln Pool. As we look at the Lincoln Pool team in lane two, there they are, the Estabrook group, Joe Wyma and his troops from Estabrook. In lane number three, also from Estabrook, uh, is from Lincoln, Sean Campbell, Richard Flores, Ryan Morgan, and Mike Gross. In lane number five will be from John F. Kennedy. 
And in lane six, running him out from Clark Recreation will be the Clark swim team. As we look at Tanner Thorne, he's been here many of the swim final championships. Those are the boys' crescendo relay teams and the, the centers that they're from. Tim, we're off to a good start here. Keep in mind, again, necessarily that the kids may necessarily not swim against a 10 year older. But when it all boils down to it, we swim for times. You might put your best two swimmers in the, in the one and three spot or the two and four spot. It might be 15, 17 year olds swimming against 10 and under. But eventually that 10 and under has to swim against that other 15, 17. So it all boils down in the wash. Everything is there about time. Well, let me put you on the spot here for a second, Luther, as we watch the boys crescendo relay teams. You're the expert, you're the coach. How do you line them up? What age group do you go with? Well, of course, I, I like to have my I like to have my, my speed swimmers in the, in the first and fourth position, Tim. I like to get a good start, and I want to have a strong finish. Okay, we heard it there, those swim team coaches that are watching. The two with the best speed go one in four. If you get off to a good start, a good lead, Normally, your third and fourth place swimmer can keep that, but even if you fall behind a little bit, you got your you got your anchor man back there with all the speed. You should be able to pull this out. Well, again, we can see that the Estabrook team is out in front. And not far behind is John F. Kennedy. Lanes two and four. Now, this second place swimmer, the second place swimmer has, has closed that gap on Esther Brook. Again, it's gonna come down to nine times out of 10, that anchor man, that fourth place swimmer. Okay, we're looking at lane number three, Esther Brook. They currently have a lead. The swimmer from JFK has run out of gas a little bit on that second leg. John F. Kennedy's gonna have to come strong, Luther. Let's see if they kept their strong swimmer at the end. These kids from Estabrook. <laughs> I, I died of my swimmers, Tim. You know, you got a half of a pool lead. I mean, and that's, that's a pretty good distance to make up in 50 yards. Now we, we're coming down to the fourth place swimmer here who's, who's, who has finished. They're finished. Well, we see Estabrook came in first place, John F. Kennedy in second, and again, it's Lincoln and Clark battling out for the third place spot. And Clark gives the third spot in today's city boys crescendo relay team. So in first place from Estabrook, Joe Wyma, Craig Conway, Chris Manfreda, Steve Flores, they are the boys crescendo relay champions. And in second place from John F. Kennedy, Roger St. Clair, Donald Black, Lorenzo Jackson, and Brian Williams. They were the runner ups. You know, Estabrook put a team in, in, in his relay team. Not in, a, in all honesty, I believe those four people won first place in the freestyle events. So they took those, those first place finishes in the freestyle event in the 10 and 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 17, put a relay team in the pool that basically could not be beat. Well, again, Luther, it's been a great day. We're right here at Forest Hills Park. We talk about Cleveland, the All-American City. Yes, the Clevelanders do need to stand up and be proud. We are the All-American City, winning wards and community police relationship, the commitment to public education, and the rebuilding of housing in the city of Cleveland. Cleveland carried that honor back this past year and has been claimed the All-American City. As we look at our lifeguards, the people that you talked about earlier that have gone beyond the call, helping make things happen all summer long, taking time out with our youngsters that we serve and trying to give them some quality services. You know, Tim, we have, we have a, another week to go, but we're looking to have an attendance for summer pools. Somewhere close to 300,000 participants will come through those pools in, in a 10-week period. And that itself is amazing. You know, we look about changes in the city coming when 
1950s were around. They built small little pools in our communities. Now we're here at Forest Hills. Commissioner mentioned gunning recreation just last year. The 1993 city finals were there. We're talking about Olympic-sized pool, meeting the demands, and building the quality of our programs. Absolutely. You know, when you start looking at wave slides and kiddie pools that's built at Estabrook and Luke Easter Park, the city has made a commitment to the people of the city of Cleveland to give you excellent swimming opportunities. It is up to you, to the citizens, and the city to come out and use these facilities. Okay, Luther, um, I'd like to go on to the girls' crescendo relay teams. And as we look over in lane number one from Thurgood Marshall, girls' crescendo relay team in lane number two, also from Thurgood Marshall, Again, we can see the outstanding participation with the girls program. And in lane three, of course, from Estabrook Recreation, they'll go on to try to match the boys and win the city title in the Crescendo Relay event. Also next to them from St uh, Warsaw Pool, over by the Slavic Village area. And in rounding out in lane number five is Thurgood Marshall. Let's see, how, let's see how well these first place swimmers do, the, the start off swimmers. And that's the big key, to get your team a lead. Let's see what they do here. It's close. It's very close. Esther Brooks team is in lane three. Has a small lead on, on, on lane, lane number four. Nothing major, but both of those, I believe, are Esther Brooks teams, aren't they? Lanes three and four. Um, no, we got um, in lane number three, Estabrook, and in lane number four from Warsaw. Okay. Estabrook's first place swimmer have gave them a, a, a pretty good lead here, at least two body lengths. Second place swimmer, keep that up. And we know what the third and fourth place swimmer is going to do. Now, you know the girls aren't going to go back and not win this event. The boys win it, the girls win it. That's the way it seems to be. I mean, when you have good freestylers, this is the event you look for. You know, we mentioned a lot about Estabrook, and we're looking at the Crescendo Relay teams, but Luther over at Estabrook, we also have another feature that was put in a couple of years ago. Right, this is, this is the, they have an eight, 18 foot water slide and a, and, and a play structure for the kids. We have this, the duplicate of that is at Luke Easter Park on the east side of Cleveland. Now, both of those, both of those complexes is the, shows the commitment that the city has to not only give kids swimming, but give them another water feature to appease the community with. And, and both of those facilities have, attendance has increased tremendously, strictly from those water slides and those kiddie pools. That kiddie structure, the parents love it. The tots love it. I mean, kids can spray water at one another, spray their parents. It's, it's lovely. You got water bubbling up from the bottom of the pool. I don't think it's another recreation complex in the city of Cleveland or in Cuyahoga County that, that can compare with those two. Well, we're looking at Estabrook. Beautiful flip turn. Oh, yes. Yes. Comes from practice. Uh, Estabrook is probably finished. We still have some swimmers who are still finna take off on the fourth leg. Lane three. Again, lane three, the girls come through in flying colors as the Crescendo Girls Relay Champions. Looking for the runner-up spot is from Warsaw Pool. Is currently there in second place. Right behind and close is Thurgood Marshall. This has been a good day. This has been a good day for the city of Cleveland, for the aquatics program, Tim, an excellent day. We thought we was gonna have to contend with the rain. It held off for us. Well, the good Lord was on our side, and you know, we look over here at Ed Schmidt, the uh, center manager from Estabrook, comes out, takes pictures, gives a support to the kids at Community His Center. It's really a truly a community event. We've heard the commissioner talk about how it's police, community, and recreation all making it happen and uh, our hats have to go off to everybody that made it possible. But Luther, we're gonna take a break now, and when we come back, we're gonna meet the champions, as well as we're gonna be picking outstanding swimmers, and we're gonna meet the head coach from Estabrook Recreation Center. Dumb.
me. You're pathetic. You little brat. Child so abuse is also known by some other words. Jerk. You moron. You're so clumsy. Words like these can hit as hard as a fist. I never born. I hate you. What you say to your children can determine how they feel about themselves. And how they feel about you. Get the picture. Stop using words that hurt. Start using words that help. For helpful information, contact us. For information about how you can help stop domestic violence, call us. Drunk driving doesn't just kill drunk drivers. Next time your friend insists on driving drunk, do whatever it takes to stop him. Welcome back. It's been the Cleveland Swim Championships at Forest Hills Pole. And right now we're going to go to the medal presentation of the Crescendo Relay Champions as we look at the medals being presented. And they are from Estabrook Recreation, both teams, the boys and the girls. The boys were from Estabrook, Joe Wyma, Craig Conway, Chris Manfreda, Steve Flores, and also the girls, Shannon Cox, Rachel Shia, Andrea Lettner, and Lisa Loretz. And I hope I got the right girls. I'm looking here, I see Liz Elsesser, Julie Wyma, Rachel Boyd and Bridget Cox. Those were the top girls in the relay team. As we look at, these are the Crescendo Relay Champions in the city of Cleveland. We're gonna take a break and when we come back, you're gonna meet the champions and the runner-ups of today's meet, as well as the outstanding swimmers right here at Forest Hill Pool. I was going to take a job with an engineering firm in New York. I got a better offer. I'm building schools overseas with the Peace Corps. The pace is a little slower than New York, but here I'm getting grassroots experience I couldn't get anywhere else. The way I look at it, the world can wait two years for another 40-story smoked glass high-rise. Peace Corps, the toughest job you'll ever love. America is burying itself in over half a million tons of trash every 24 hours. If you're not recycling, you're throwing it all away. This may look like ordinary garbage in front of me, but actually it's the start of something beautiful. Cleveland has implemented a curbside recycling program that makes our city a more beautiful place to live, and it's easy too. Put bottles, cans, and plastic containers in blue bags like these. And tie cardboard and newspaper in bundles and put them on the curb with the trash. I urge everyone to participate in this most important program to help clean up Cleveland. Cleveland Curbside Recycling. It's good riddance. Again, we're going to meet our outstanding swim teams for today's meet. And we'll go to Desiree Powell. Desiree? Hi, we're at poolside with the head coach of the swim team for Thurgood Marshall, Richard Brains. Brains, better known as Nick, and we're here with his young ladies and young men that represent the swim team. We want to congratulate you and the team for being runners-up within this swim meet today. Congratulations, you all did a great job. Thank Here's you. your plaque representing you are the city's runner-up champs. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> Next, we'll be back with Luther and the winners of the city meet today. All right. 
tell me, Matt, what's, what's the secret to Esther Brooks winning this team for five years in a row? Well, a lot of parent support, I guess, and a lot of good swimmers, put it that way. <laughs> I can imagine. You guys not only won the team trophy, you won the four outstanding swimmers plaques. Team, congratulations. At this time, I want to present the team trophy to you guys at Estabrook, team plaque, and to you, Matt, congratulations. Again, on the job well done. Congratulations, gang. Excellent job. We're over here to me again. Okay, I need um. Okay, we're here with the outstanding swimmers of the meet today to give them their plaques for their accomplishments today. First, I'd like to start off with the ages of 10, 8 to 10. No, 8 to 10. For 10 and under, co-winners are Richard Wema and Elizabeth Elsesser. Who is that? All right, we're gonna have another one for you a little later. The next winner for 12 and under, Rachel Boyd. 13 to 14, Rick, uh, Bridget Cox. And our outstanding swimmer for the 15 to 17 year olds, Mike Wyma. Correct, okay. Congratulations to all the swimmers, and we wanna go right back to Tim and Luther. Right, it truly has been a great day here at Forest Hills Pool. Estabrook Recreation being crowned champions, as well as many outstanding swimmers that we have to look forward to in our city pools. Luther, maybe a closing thought? Yes, Tim, I think the thought for the city is that we have an exciting day today, but these are the type of things that happens around our pool seven days a week. We have an excellent program in the city. The residents need to come out and take advantage of our city pools. It's a great day for Estabrook Recreation Center. Our graduation goes out to Thurgood Marshall, the runner-up team. And overall, we had a fabulous time today. Well, we'd like to take this time to thank the CLV TV crew, uh, our, our director, Henry uh, Picturna, Dan Sevick, Mary, Paula, Bob, Matt. All of them have given us great shots here this afternoon at Forest Hills Pool. You've been watching the City of Cleveland Swim Championships and we, for Luther Demery, as well as Desiree Powell, Good night, everybody. We hope you enjoyed today's game. Make sure you head over to our YouTube channel, TV20 Cleveland, and subscribe to get the latest videos. I'm Christian Patterson. Thanks for watching TV20 Classic Sports.